Hey everybody, welcome back to the Final Frontier. Now let's see what Benjamin Sisko is up to. Although before we do, uh, of course, it wouldn't be a rattle run through if I didn't forget a few things. Uh, um, when Jen, as the Dura sisters, took out that Romulan Warbird, I should have checked over here on the little Warbird card because there's a reminder of your reward. Hey, yeah, you, you uh, get rid of the Warbird token like I did and get experience off it and get one reputation. So she has actually pumped up her standing in the esteem of everybody in this sector of space. Now, the more your reputation increases, the reputation increases, the easier it is for you to recruit new crew members. And on the flip side, if you do bad things, your reputation decreases and it gets harder and harder. In fact, your reputation can decrease so far that you can't recruit anybody. Um, and interestingly, remember, she took those isolytic weapons, which are an outlawed weapon. Every time she uses those, her reputation is going to fall, um, which is going to make it harder to recruit crew members. That's why she took this power, which I looked up the name of it. It's blackmail, because she might need to use blackmail to recruit crew members in the future if, she, if her reputation starts to fall, because she gets a little bit frisky. So anyway... Um, so I totally forgot to do that. I gave her the experience, but not the reputation increase because she took out... I don't know, the rules don't really say why taking out Romulan Warbirds increases your reputation. I'm going to assume that in the story that these are kind of renegades or something like that, or you know, they're just kind of out of control and everybody in the sector breathes a sigh of relief um, because the Romulans are being very, very aggressive in this sector of space. And I mean, you know they're aggressive because if, if, if Jen had just wanted to peacefully fly right by, they would have attacked her. So taking out aggressive Romulans increases your reputation, which is interesting even amongst Romulans that you might decide to recruit. Um, it's it, one of the really cool things about this game. Andrew Parks and the designers of this game paid so much attention to Star Trek theme. I love it because you might think, hey, taking out a Romulan warbird, that means um, Dontara wouldn't become easier to recruit. She'd become harder. But the thing is, if you know your Trek, the Romulans who come out who are potentially recruitable are the ones who have in the past on the show shown flexibility. They're not the hardliners. Nontara and who are some other ones in here? Um, yeah, Jarok. I mean, uh, you know, Jarok is very famously a very, very moral upstanding guy who doesn't agree with the precepts of the Romulan Empire. You know, he's, um, you know, anyway, so the Romulans who you potentially recruit thematically from the show history are the ones who would be willing, who do realize that rampaging Rama and warboards is a bad thing and they understand why you might have to take them out. Now, who says we actually blew this up? It could be that we just disabled their shields and weapons and, and you know, just left them in the side of the earth. Surely that's what Cisco would have done. Cisco wouldn't have blown them up. Although, let's be honest, um, the Dura sisters, yeah, they blew these up. And that increased her reputation, but even Dontara is impressed by that because Dontara realizes that these Romulan warbirds should not be flying around terrorizing the sector. Anyway, so that was just a little thematic interlude. That's why her reputation increased. It's going to make it easier for her to recruit people in the future. Because, I didn't mention, as part of setup, uh, each of us has this little marker here, uh, which is where I've been putting my, oh, uh, my tactics cards. But the tactics cards, they actually go someplace else. Because these are the spaces where we put our first crew member that we recruit. But anyway, we'll worry about that later. Uh, we'll probably recruit next. So, anyway though, let's go on, let's get to Cisco's turn. cisco has got seven cards in his hand. Research, synthesize data, full speed ahead, explore. Cisco himself, improvise and intimidate. So with all this stuff, he is very, very confident that he is because he had all these cards because he had fortune on his side. He's going to come over here. He's going to take out this Dominion, no problem. So first thing he's going to do on his turn is come in through the war pole. Boom. Now he needs to get over there. He only needs two movement to get there. He must have some. Where are the move cards? Explore. Yeah, okay, he'll just go on ahead and use this full speed ahead. Not for its powered up thing, but for its regular thing. He's going to play this, and that gives him two move. So he is here. And I mean, and you can, if you don't remember exactly how it works, you can check the Romulan starbase when revealed, i.e., when the tile got put down, put a starbase face down. Um, the token is revealed when the ship moves adjacent. So we get to take a looky loo before we attack. All right. So this Dominion base has three defense, but it's strong against normal phaser fire. So that means if we're using regular weapons instead of photon torpedoes or something, we have to do double damage. We have to do six to take this guy out, to take out the resistance and um, conquer this base. 
Now, if we don't take them out, they get to do five damage and, oh, what is this symbol? This is the symbol for disruptors, which means if they get to attack, they get to do double damage for anything. Um, shields are, no, actually, no, that's not. Our shields are halved against disruptor fire. So these guys are tough. They do disruptor fire. They have better shields. They're strong against uh, special weapons. They're worth four experience points if we beat them. All right, and the interesting thing is, remember um, Jen, the Duras sisters, she increased her reputation by taking out that rampaging warbird. If you ever attack any kind of space station, your reputation decreases. The rules say it's actually an act of war. So by attacking this, Cisco's um, reputation is going to drop a little bit. Even if all he's trying to do is liberate this station from Dominion control because Riker is being held on the station and etc. etc. Anyway, so here's the cards we've got. We've already played one full speed ahead to move over there. So now, we are going to, we're done with our movement. Can't move anymore, can't move through here. Can't move here, um, you know, can't go off in that direction because of the asteroids. Could move over here if we wanted, but we've come to party. So, let's uh, uh, start the fight. And if we do regular attacks, we have to do six points of damage. If we do long range six points of damage, they'll never get to hit us. But let's see, what do I got here? Let's, uh, all right, this is, this is all movement. Let's just find my attack cards. This is attack, this is diplomacy, this is something else, this is a repair and something else. So, oh, of all my cards, I didn't look that close. I've only got two attack cards, Cisco himself and Improvised. You saw me use the Improvised before, which means I can get five attack if I have a purple, and there is a purple here. So I've got five attack, otherwise I've got three attack. Either way, unfortunately, it's not long range attack, and that's a problem. Because that means if I don't take them out, like, you know, Jen took them out with long range, I don't have three long range damage. Although even if I did, it would have to be six. Unless, let's see here. Um, and does uh, Cisco, uh, right, his power up is, oh, he has a uh, photon pulse and photon, he, you know, photon shields. And if he powers up, he has better photon shields. But this guy's not firing photon weapons, he's firing disruptors and um, one shield for each special ability right so Cisco is all about the photons which isn't really helping us here so I think Cisco is gonna have to improvise to take these guys out he's gonna claim his one car one die it's gonna be that purple which bumps this up we're doing six damage we're gonna be doing although well we're not doing long-range damage unfortunately against the Dominion Starbase so we skip that and we go straight to the Dominion hitting us Five damage is coming towards the Defiant. It's a tough little ship, but that's going to hurt. Now, what can we do about that? Well, we need shields. We could use this Improvise to get three shields, or we could pump it up to get five shields. Um, and now, this, although, remember, because they are disruptors, our shields are only worth half, and I think it's rounded down, isn't it? Let's look here. Uh, all shields are halved when blocking the enemy. I'm pretty sure it's rounded down. So... We need 10 shields to completely avoid damage. If we have two shields, we only avoid one damage. If we have four shields, we avoid two of that damage. These guys are going to work us over. Ouch. And now, um, but remember, Cisco does have um, shields. He has photon pulse shields of three, or if he pumps them up, they go up to five. But here's the thing. Any shields will work against normal attacks or disruptor attacks for that matter. Um, photon shields are particularly good against photon weapons, but they're perfectly fine against regular. But even still, so the only shields we've got are shields of three or five. But that means because it's a disruptor weapon, they're really one or two. So that's if we use Cisco and bump him up, we will avoid two of this damage. But to do that, that means I've got to take the red die. Um, which means I can't take the purple die to bump up the improvise. So the improvise will only do three, but then you know what? I can just go on ahead and spend three cards to do the other um, three, because remember, I have to do six total damage to take these guys out. So I do think, although remember, another thing I can do is I could discard cards to up my shields. Although unfortunately, because again, they are disruptors, discard, this only gives me half a shield instead of a shield because of disruptors. Yikes! Okay. So let's think about this a little bit more. How are we going to do this? And we and because, although oh here's another thing too. Cisco's attack is is a pulse attack of two, so this is strong against um, phaser attacks. If Cisco attacks with this photon, 
That means he'll do two of the three damage he needs, and then he'll only have to do two more. So yeah, it makes, it makes more sense to use the Improvise to block this incoming damage, and then use Cisco's Photon Pulse Attack to do damage, because this guy is not... He's strong against regular attacks, he's not strong against Photon Attacks. So it makes more sense to use Cisco for attack, not defense. So, right, we didn't do... Ha we had no long-range attacks. We used the move, so that's done. We have no long-range attacks, so we now take five points of damage. Let's pull out the Improvise, and um, we will pump it up. So we have five shields. This guy is doing five damage. Um, but our shields are rounded down, so that's really only two. Let's discard this other movement card. So now we have six shields, right? Um, which means we're taking three damage. Is that, is that right? Wait a minute. Yeah, we have six shields. Right, 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 yeah. There's five total damage. We have six total shields. Five from the Improvise and one here. So six shields, but unfortunately, they are halved because of Disruptor. So it's like we really only have three shields. So that means we are going to take two damage. Uh, if I gave up the rest of my cards, I could avoid all the damage, but then we wouldn't take the guy out, and this whole turn would have been wasted. So I'm going to take some damages. But like I said, remember, this was a ch choice Jen had right up front. She, the Duras sisters could have come out over here, but instead they went after the Warbird. Taking over a base is tougher than taking out a Warbird. But that's why Cisco went with the Fortune. He figured all these extra cards would help him take it out. And he's going to take it out, but it's, it's going to take a beating. He'll have to repair later. But anyway, so, all right, just to make sure I'm doing this right, we moved... Then, we started fire, we had no long range, so he's coming in with five damage. We improvised to get five shields the, from the data core, and then we used this to get six shields, but it's half because of the disruptor, so that's really only three shields, so two damage made it through. Now here's how damage works. Whenever you take damage, you immediately take a damage card and add it to your hand. This is clogging up your hand, it never goes away unless you do short-term repairs which I might do later. So I take damage. For every damage card I take, that means I have absorbed a certain amount of the damage. I'm sorry, these are, oh, what's the difference? Is damage and hull damage? I remember in Mage Knight, they were called damage and wounds. I forget what this is called. This is like hull damage or something like that. But anyway, so I take this card, and that means by taking this, I have absorbed two of the incoming damage. Cisco, as a captain, his defenses are good enough that he, um, for every damaged hull, he absorbs two damage that was coming in. And remember, only two damage is coming in. Of the five that was coming, I've absorbed three. So two were coming, so that means I took one card to absorb those two. Now, let's say I took all five of the damage. I didn't shield myself at all. So what would happen is, I would take this, and that would absorb two, there'd be three more. I'd take another, that would absorb two, there'd be one more, and I would have to take a third. A third. So I would have to end up with three wound cards in my deck in my hand, which would really cripple me in the future. But because I went heavy into shields, even though it was a disruptor fire, I was able, I, I came out of it with only one damage. So that's pretty good considering how strong these guys are. So I've, I've weathered the storm, and now we fire back. We have to do three total damage, but phaser fire is cut in half. So let's start doing some damage. Let's play Cisco. That's going to be a photon, a photon pulse attack of two. That's two of the three damage I needed to do to these guys. I need to do one more damage. Um, and since the rest of my damage is going to be regular, i got to discard two cards to do one more point of damage because it's regular damage. What do I want to discard? Intimidate, diplomacy, research, or synthesize data? Let's see here. You know what? Um, intimidate is, it, it helps me recruit guys, but by intimidating them, I hurt my reputation if I do a really big, you know, if I pump intimidate up, so I have five diplomacy, which lets me do a big recruit, I hurt my reputation, otherwise it's a small. Um, Cisco, he's going to use this intimidate to um, do, let's see, wait, I needed two more cards, didn't I? Yes, I do. Because this is two damage, I need to do one more damage, so I've got to give up two cards. I'll give up uh, three of these. See, I want to keep both of these. Research would let me get a data token or heal one. That's if somebody gets wounded in an away mission, they get healed. Um, but what I would do with this research is I would take a data token and then synthesize data would let me turn that data token into a data crystal, which means I could hold on to it forever. So these are really, really nice to be able to combo together, but I have to get rid of two cards to do that last bit of damage because these guys are strong. So... That means I could do the research. Oh, 
Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold the folk. Hold the phone, folks. Let's back up here. All right. So the damage came in. We built our shields. We took a damage. Now, I'm not going to attack with Cisco right away. Before I attack, um, this is something I can do anytime I want. This little symbol means I can do this in combat. I can do this symbol anytime I want. I can't do a diplomacy action during combat, but I can do this. I'm going to do some research. In the middle of the fight, we're going to research the sensor t sweep we've taken. So, research. Gain one red or gold data token. Or heal one. I'm not healing. I'm going to gain a red. Boom! Right. Um, oh, come on, Cisco. I have to admit, this is the first time I've used Cisco. I assumed I was going to use this red to pump up his strength and that that would give me more photon pulse attacks, but it doesn't. This pumps up his photon shields. Ah. All right, and gain plus one photon pulse shield for each special ability and resistance to the attacking enemy token. Ooh. Oh, wow. See, now, this is a perfect example of how complex this game can get. I thought I would use Cisco because he's going to be better at the attack, but if I use the research to get this so I pump him up, his defense becomes much, much better. His defense becomes 5 plus 1 for every special ability and resistance. This thing has 2. So this is a 7 defense. So that means... And it's all photon defense, which means I don't care about the disruptor. No, I do still care about the Disruptor. Oh wait, no, Disruptor is all shields are halved when blocking. So I'd have seven defense with one card, which means it would still be three. I'd still take two. No, all right, it didn't work that well. Shoot, shoot, shoot. All right, let's roll back again. So I'm not going to do the research to get the red, because I thought this would pump up Cisco to do that last bit of damage, but it doesn't. Cisco, come on, Cisco. All righty. Um, all right. Uh, da, 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 da. So, right, so Cisco attacked. That's two of the three. I'm going to discard two cards. It'll be both of these research synthesized data. That's my third point of damage. So I've done one, two, uh, two and a half, three because of the defense. And so we've taken them out. Phew. All right, so that was tough. And I, oh, remember, I started with seven cards, and I'm down to one card plus a wound card. All right, so anyway, we've taken this guy out. And, if you mind, um, when defeated, righty, I get to mark this as this is a reminder that this is mine. At the end of the game, we would check everything we've defeated. That's points at the end of the game if we were playing competitively, although it counts as points in the cooperative game too. So, because I launched an assault, Cisco drops his reputation by one, which means he no longer gets a recruitment bonus, but he does get four experience. One, two, three, four, which was more than the Dura sisters got, so he's actually higher level. And let's see here. Uh, can be assaulted, you gain reputation by one. If successfully assaulted, mark it with your faction, move on to it, and gain one undiscovered card. So, not only do we get four experience, which will pay in, but we get one undiscovered card. These are super powerful cards. So, this was a much tougher fight. I actually took a wound. It took my whole turn to do it, but I got more experience and I get an undiscovered card. Now remember, you get your bonuses at the end of the turn. So anyway, that was it. And now that this Dominion base has been um, uh, placated, or is, it has been defeated, from now on, anybody can come here and recruit crew that has the Dominion space on it. And you can also come here to recruit, uh, to, to basically, using the recruit action, grab additional unco or, you know, undiscovered cards, which is cool as well. So this is a great place for recruiting now that Cisco took it down and got the Dominion forces in line. Phew. Okay. So... He moved, and then he did his action. He's still got this diplomacy, but he can't use it because his action is done. Now, he can discard this as well, but he's going to save this because he's going to need to do some diplomacy to recruit some people next turn. So, uh, this goes back, and it's a yellow. All these cards get discarded. It was a very busy turn. Barely took him out. That was crazy. Ah, uh, There we go. <laughs> One-handed. And he, but he got a free movement as well. Um, so that was also a benefit. So now he's not too far away from this Romulan base if he wants to take that out. Or this, what type of, it's a Class K planet that he could do an away mission on. So um, at the end of his turn, he, uh, he leveled up. So like he's going to get one of these and one of these and one of these. So this is one data type of any type he wants. 
It's like grabbing an extra. Or this one is, oh, what is this one? I don't know what that one is. Got to look on the little cheat sheet. Everybody has a cheat sheet. Because everybody has completely different. And remember, he could take these, or he could take the one that the Dura sisters left behind, in which case he ignores those. Although there's a penalty for doing that, weirdly. Tactics. Once per turn, choose one enemy token. It gains defense minus one for each resistance it has. So it makes them weaker. You know, I think we want this one instead, which is called resourcefulness. Re Cisco is now a resourceful fellow. This comes over here. It's something Jen could grab in the future. Let's put all the other stuff back over here. Oh, man. Out of the way. I have very little room. All right. So, so he got resourceful, which he can do uh, in a future turn. It's like you get an extra die for free, in addition to the one you take from over there. And it's one of your choice. He gets one of these, compassion, the Riker maneuver, or experience. This, would this is a diplomacy and repair. Um, let's see, what's the repair? Because he does have some damage. For rest of the turn, except during combat, you can play diplomacy to draw cards. So you can draw more cards from your deck and go through your deck faster with experience. The rest of the turn, to draw cards. I don't see how this, this doesn't have any repair, does it? No, I don't see any repair, so I don't know why that's marked that way. Um, Riker Maneuver. Uh, target enemy gets attack minus three for the rest of the turn. That would have been handy to have when fighting this thing. And, or, pumped up, attack minus five for the rest of the turn. That would have been huge, especially since that was disruptor fire. The Riker Maneuver would have come in very handy. Compassion. Heal your teammates by two or five. Turn day, Yeah, we don't have time for Compassion. That would be a Riker move. Let's, or, I'm sorry, a Picard move. Let's take a Riker. We're planning on getting Riker. Let's get that Riker Maneuver. All right, so we take that, put it in the top of the deck. And also, because we took out a mean star base, get system access, penetrate shields, or advanced research. Target enemy loses all resistance. Target enemy gains defense minus three, or all enemies defense minus two, because you can fight multiple guys in one action. Defense cannot be reduced below one, or advanced research. During the remainder of the turn, you can receive the stronger effect for free of two cards. Normally, to get the stronger effect, you have to pay a, um, a, you know, a, a data. This, now you have to pay a blue data to even use the basic of this. To use the advanced, you have to play a blue and a black. But with one blue data, you could do the advance of two different things. So let's go on ahead and take that. Let's take advanced research. That's pretty awesome. Okay. And now, this is his hand. At the end of his turn, he's going to draw back up to five. He could discard this, but he wants his diplomacy because now he's at a base. He wants to recruit Riker next turn. So let's draw back up to five. But that means we only get to draw three because of that. And we have two of them. Alrighty. Actually, we're going to be able to... Um, right, so we can get Diplomacy 5, but we need 7. So that means we'll have to discard 2 cards. Hmm. We'll worry about that in the future. Alrighty. Okay. So, that was Cisco's very exciting action-packed turn where he took out the Dominion base and laid claim to it. And the future he'll recruit right, William and Riker. Um, right. Back to... I was going to say back to Duras Sisters, but no. Um, the dummy goes, then the Duros, then Cisco. Now um, Duros goes again, or the dummy goes again. Uh, draws three cards, one, two, three, and a yellow. Hey, he's got a yellow. That means he draws another. The timer is going quick. The timer is halfway through. So now back to the Duros sisters. I've totally forgotten what their hand was. It feels like an hour ago that we played their turn. Right. So now remember, first you can move, and then you can do an action. And she wants well. <sighs> mm. So I don't think she's going to move, because she wants to recruit, since she's already here at an outpost, which lets her recruit any of these characters. So she's going to skip on moving, even though she's got full speed ahead. She's not going to move. She's going to go right to recruiting. Um, right. And by the way, she's used her secret plot. That's pretty much done. And my fortune is pretty much done as well, because that was just a one-time thing. So she is here at an outpost. She's going to recruit one of these people. How is she going to do it? Open hailing frequencies. This gives her a diplomacy of two or four, her choice. She'll pump it up to make it a four. Because remember, you get one die. Now, and because she's so popular, she gets plus one. Right off the bat, just from that one card, she has a diplomacy of five. That's enough to get the Klingon lieutenant. And of course, she'd rather have a Klingon lieutenant on board rather than um, a Romulan, Dantara, or uh, Donatra. Or Donna, Donatra. Yeah, I'm going to go to Donatra. I don't remember what her name was in the movie. Um, but if she basically you know, uses a card as a wild, she could go up to six, because she'd have four, five, six, and get Donatra. And Donatra is more powerful. Long range attacks of two, attack or shields of two. The Klingon Lieutenant isn't bad, though. Move of two, and you get movement. You can move through nebulas faster, and an attack of three. 
or the medical officer who can do repairs or heals, but what the heck, she doesn't plan on taking damage, she doesn't need repairs, or get a blue data token to pump another card up. Speaking of which, let's see, well, she knows she's going to do this, she's going to do these other things. She's not going to move, she's not going to attack or need shield, she's not going to attack. She could synthesize data. When you play this, also pay one um, data token and then permanently gain a crystal that you would carry around. This is the only data she's got, though, so I don't think she's going to synthesize data. So I think... That means since she can't make good use of this this turn, she will go on ahead and use this as plus one diplomacy. So that means she's got four, five, six. She's going to recruit herself a Romulan, not a Klingon. Ah, oh, the Patak, what is she thinking? But what the heck, she'll go with it. So that's it. She's done her one action. And so now at the end of her turn, this gets re-rolled, goes back in. This is a wild, by the way. This can be a red, a blue, or a yellow, your choice. These cards get discarded that she played. Um, now, these cards all got refilled, the recruiting does not. The recruiting doesn't get refilled until the round is over, i.e. when somebody has completely emptied out their deck. In the end of her turn, she's still got three cards in her hand. She could discard any of these, but she's going to keep all of these, because these are really great attacks. And she's thinking, what is she, where is she going to be going in the future? There's two planets within easy reach. Um, the H planet, they are, they are, they're really unpredictable. They might require you to fight two enemies, which means you need a lot of attack when you go there, or they just might need a lot of Daedal Crystals. These are just kind of medium difficulty planets. I think she'll keep all her attack and she'll just draw back up two more, another battle stations, and an explore. So she's got some movement, she's got some fighting, she's got her next turn ready. All right, ready spaghetti. Um, back on to Cisco now. What is Cisco gonna do? Um, well... He was going to plan on recruiting as well, since he's over here in this Dominion base that he just conquered, and get Riker, because that just seems really, really cool with the Riker maneuver. But because he did a bad, bad thing, he doesn't get plus one on his diplomacy anymore. So he needs a full seven diplomacy to recruit Riker. How much diplomacy can he muster? Five if he intimidates, which means he would need a red. And then he'd have to do two more. He'd have to give up two more cards. Ah, <sighs> shoot, shoot, shoot. Now, he doesn't have to discard. He could just fly away, because he does have the Riker maneuver. I mean, he could say, to heck with discarding. I, you know, I, I'll come back and I'll, I'll recruit somebody later. He's got move, so he could get over here to this Romulan base, and then he could, and forget about diplomacy, he could use the Riker maneuver to weaken whatever's here, but he doesn't really have any good attack cards either. But if he uses advanced research by taking this as a blue, that would let him, um, or actually he could take the blue, well actually he would have to have a blue and he'd have to get the black for someplace else to do the super pumped up version. But that means he would be able to do double, he'd have four move, which means he could actually, he could do exploration and a fight. That's actually pretty cool. Although, he can't explore here because there, this asteroid belt is considered to go here, so you, you have to get up to one of these spaces to explore. So that means he'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then explore. But could he get eight move? No, he only gets four move if he bumps up the full speed ahead. Shoot! Because I want to use the advanced research to bump up two powers. So bump up this to four and then bump up this, target enemy gets attack minus five. But the, still, the question is, would he be able to take these guys out even? There's a nice little reminder of here of what all the Romulan star bases are. They have defense of three, four, three, four, five, or three um, with extra strength. So he doesn't think he's got a chance of taking this Romulan base out. So I think he is going to stay, and but he can't get right. He wants Riker so bad. Well, okay, wait a minute. Okay, he can. He just has to spend a lot of cards. So, first of all, let's go on ahead and take this and pump this up to Diplomacy 5. But at the end of the turn, we're going to lose one rep because Cisco's coming in here and, you know, he's going to bully somebody to do this. So that's 5 Diplomacy, but he needs 7 total to get Riker. So, he will get rid of this, because he'll get, I mean, and that gets him up to 6 Diplomacy, but he has to get rid of one of his new super cards. Ah! Uh, he'll get rid of the advanced research. We'll, we'll do it later. That's painful, but that's seven total diplomacy, and so he will now recruit Riker, which gives him four diplomacy in the future. Um, but now, at the end of his turn, he didn't use the Riker maneuver. He's got Riker and the Riker maneuver. That's just thematically cool. But his uh, reputation drops again. Cisco is being a Dominion War type Cisco here. He is um, not being very friendly. All right, so draws back up. One, two. 
three plus. He's still got that damage. Oh, now the other thing he could have done at the outpost is um, repair or heal. You can buy one point of repair or heal for three diplomacy. So instead of using all that diplomacy to get Riker, he could have used a little bit of diplomacy and got rid of that, um, that damage card. What the heck? He'll just go with that. All right. So that was his turn. Next turn, he's got Riker. He's got the Riker maneuver. Um, he feels like he's got a good chance at taking out that Romulan starbase. All right. So and uh, that was his turn. So now, once again, a Martok goes. Drawing three cards for him. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Three cards. It's a blue. Doesn't match that. So, on to the Dura Sisters. Okay. Bopity 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 bop. Now then, it's the Dura Sisters' turn. But here's another interesting thing. During another player's turn, if you are standing at an outpost on somebody else's turn, you can subjugate that outpost, which um, makes you lose another reputation, but you get to draw two extra cards. So you can have, you know, so if I don't feel that I've got enough cards on my next turn to take out this Romulan, I could subjugate the outpost, lose more reputation, and get two more cards so I'd have a much better shot at next turn. But I do that on somebody else's turn. Worry about that later. Right now, the Dura sisters have got these five cards. Battle stations, full speed ahead, isolytic burst, battle stations, and explore. Let's move out. Um, oh, by the way, the Dura sisters could have drawn two more cards. They could have subjugated this outpost, but they chose not to do it because they're good girls. Um, anyway, so let's play full speed ahead. That's two move. Let's go one, two, and hey, we're between here. And you know what? Let's go on ahead and grab this yellow to make it four move. Two move to move here. And then, as a reminded here, you can spend two move to explore and put a new tile on the board. So let's explore. And what have we found? We have found, um, boom, an asteroid belt. We, it's a, we hit a wall. But there is a warbird over here, another dominion base over here. Wow, and a, basically a maze of asteroids you've got to get through and another class case. So that's kind of a wall. You can fly through here, but it requires three movement to get through these spaces. Got to go all the way around here to get to this warbird. Wow, OK. But the important thing is, every time you explore, you get one experience. All right. So that was it. We're done moving. Spent two and then two more to explore. And basically hit a wall. Even if we wanted to keep flying, couldn't keep flying in that direction. Right, so now we are next to this planet or this planet. When you're adjacent to a planet, you can send an away mission and beam down to the planet. So that is totes what she is going to do. And we got to decide, are we going to beam down to the K or are we going to... Well, actually, the K planet is maybe beaming down. Like I said, the, or, I'm sorry, not the K, the H. The H are very unpredictable. Um, either it's going to be a challenge where you have to... Oh, what is it? Oh, no, 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 no. No, you don't beam down for these. Uh, it's you draw. What do you draw? Yeah, you draw ships. There are either ships in orbit around here you have to fight, or this planet is in need of resources and you have to pay data chips to help them out. It's one of those two things. You won't know until you try to interact with that. She doesn't feel like she wants to do Well, I mean, if she doesn't have the chips, and she just used this, so she can't get any chips. Now is not a good time to do that. If she were to, she feels like she's strong enough to maybe take out two full guys. But she doesn't know, since she has no chips, she's not going to go with that. She's going to beam down to the uh, Class K planet. When undefeated, if your ship is adjacent, you can beam down um, for your action. If you do, draw a cast. So we don't, I don't understand why we don't just draw this and put this on the, the thing while we're playing. But anyway, we draw it once we beam down. Although I know there's one reason to do it, because this could have either been a Class K planet or, depending on the, it could have been a class pay planet under distress. And you only know it's under distress because there's a different icon here. So I guess if you'd cover it up, you wouldn't know if it was under distress or not. But anyway, it's a regular ca class K. She's beaming down. And here's what the situation is. When you beam down on a planet, your first option is you can do diplomacy. If the Dura sisters can, can somehow get eight diplomacy going, they can make friends with the uh, inhabitants of this planet and, uh, and, not, and, and avoid a fight altogether. But you think they're here for diplomacy? I don't think so. I see no diplomacy on any of these. So they're going to skip that and go straight to the fight. These guys, you need to do five damage, and they do four damage themselves. So let's go on ahead and um, beam down and have some rough and tumble. OK, when you beam down, you have to decide who is beaming down, which is to say, We've got these little beam tokens. Um, Dontara could beam down. And uh, the Dura sisters themselves could beam down. Uh, but we don't have to. 
The reason you beam characters down is, if we want Dontara to contribute her attack or shields or long range attack to the fight that's going to happen on this planet, she's got to beam down. If she doesn't beam down, we don't get the um, added benefit of these bonuses. But if she does beam down, she is potentially going to take damage and means she has to be healed. The same is true for beaming down with the Duras sisters. If they beam down, well, if I had my, well, we haven't, I haven't drawn the Duras sister card yet. But if they beam down, oh, wait a minute, I forgot. They've got blackmail. They do have blackmail. If, so that's two plus one for every um, chip they've got. No, nah, it's not enough. They, uh, yeah, they, they can't, they, they, they can't blackmail their way into a diplomatic solution. They're definitely coming down to fight. So if they beam down, that means they could use this. So they'd have to beam down to use this for diplomatic, but they're not. So the other reason to beam down is, um, these guys are going to do four damage total. That damage has to be able to be successfully completely spread out amongst everybody who goes down. If it can't, the away mission fails, everybody beams back up wounded, and you never get a chance to fire back and earn the experience points. So, if we beam nobody down, then what happens is we basically beam down a bunch of red shirts, you know, just this no-name security force, which means if any damage is taken, the mission is an instant fail, and you basically wasted your turn. So, but if we beam them down, then they can absorb damage. And in fact, I mean, Dontar, if she goes down, she has three. She'll absorb damage. And let's see here. And I could, um, yeah, I think so. I think the Dura sisters will stay up. Dontara will beam down. Dura sisters will stay up because we don't want them to take damage. And uh, so our away mission is that Dontara or uh, Donatra plus some red shirts are beaming down to the planet. The Dura sisters stay up because if they get wounded, that means our defense in space combat drops. And that's a really big problem. It's, it's very, very bad to get your captain wounded. If Dontara gets wounded, it's not that big a deal. Plus, they, all, they can't really go down and do anything because I don't have my Dura sister card, which is somewhere in here. Is that it? Yeah, Lursa and Bator. If I had this in my hand, it might make sense for them to beam down. But that, all they'll be is a meat shield if they beam down right now. So they're staying on board. Dontara's going to go down. She's going to take care of business with the security forces. Um, you know, she got recruited. She's going to lead these Klingons into battle on this innocent Class K planet. All right. So we're beaming down. Now, um, so Dontara's down there. She can do um, attack of three or shields of three, or she can do long range attack of two. We would need a long range attack of five to take these guys out though. So forget about long range attack. We're skipping that. We're going straight to them doing damage. So Dontara is going to um, use shields. Plus, I can still use shields for my hand. Let's see, how much damage do we have to do? We have to do five. So she can do three shields. How many, all right, so they're doing four points of damage. So, um, but they don't have any special powers. We just have to absorb four. I can just use battle stations and battle stations. That's four total shields. So we won't take any damage on the surface because you can use your cards for space battles or away missions. And then, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I, I said, well, Dontara by herself can only do two long range attack. We couldn't take them out with a long range attack. But yeah, we can. Dontara beams down. She's immediately going to use her power. We move this here to indicate she can't use any of her powers again until the next round when somebody empties out their deck and we trigger the next round. She's going to do a long range attack of two. And she brought along an isolytic burst, which does a long range attack of three, but we lose one reputation because it's an illegal weapon. Although that won't happen until the end of the turn. Um, but I'll just do it. Well, yeah, I'll have it at the end of the turn. And that's a long range of five. We took these guys out before they even knew what hit them. Boom! They never got a chance to fire back. We didn't need to worry about shields or anything. With one card, an isolytic burst, we took them out. And um, so we earned four experience points. One, two, three, four. Which um, the, the upgrade we get now is not another one of these cards and another skill. Instead, we get another one of these tokens, so now we have room for a second recruited crew member. And our hand size is still five, but our captain's defense just moved up to three instead of two. So Dontara led a very, you know, armed with isolytic weapons, led a very successful away mission, and took over this class K planet, which would be worth points at the end of the game. And let's see here. So, when defeated, uh, blah, blah, blah. If, you, if you overcome the token, mark it with your federation, gain, and so her reward gets an undiscover. 
Justice, System Access, or Penetrate Shields. What the heck? Penetrate Shields. She wants to fight, fight, fight. Right, which means another one comes out. And what else? Mark with your, and if you're defeated, you're right. Uh, and while defeated, now this place is defeated, this is a place anybody can do an away mission, but you don't get any kind of reward other than just experience. You draw another chip and you just, you know, you, you can just keep attacking this. Yeah, um, there's no reason, but if you want, if, you, if you're a warlike player, you can just keep beaming down to fight these guys and get more and more experience and kind of make their lives miserable. But in the meantime, she got an undiscovered card and she did it all with only two cards. These get discarded. She's still got three cards in her hand, but she's done her move. She's done her action. She can't do anything else. So she'll hold on to all of these, draw back up to five. There's her penetrate shields and her explore. And that's good because she's going to need a lot of move. Although, heck, maybe next turn she'll go for this planet over here and take a chance. But anyway, that's so worry about that next turn. So, and that was her turn. Now it's Cisco's turn again. And is Cisco going to come over here? Well, first of all, Cisco had to decide if... Um, he was going to, if he, if he was going to subjugate the outpost he was on, or, no, 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 I'm sorry, you can't, you can only subjugate outpost, you can't subjugate Romulan base, or, or Dominion base, no, you can't, so, he cannot subjugate a uh, Dominion base, he can only subjugate, Dominion bases, once they've been conquered, they become a place where you can recruit stuff, basically, um, including recruiting more of these superpower cards, but they're very expensive to recruit. So he's got four cards in his hand. That's all he's got. Is, he, is it enough to come over here and take out these Romulans? Well, for starters, he can move. Oh, man, he doesn't even have any move cards. Um, and I forgot, since he's not at a regular outpost, he's at a Dominion place, he cannot use the repair heal. Although what you can do on your turn if you want, you can basically skip your entire turn to do, um, what, I forget what they're called, short term. Oh, where are they? On your turn. You can perform emergency repairs, which means you can discard one non-damage card and any number of damage cards. So he can just get rid of this and one of his other cards so that he draws back up. But that just means it goes into his discard pile. It'll come back later. He wants to do full-on repairs. So the question is, maybe he should, instead of coming over here, he should use some cards to move and come over here and maybe up to this uh, space dock and repair over there. But that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He would need eight movement and he has no movement. But I totally forgot. First thing he's going to do this turn is repair. He's going to repair the hull. He's going to get rid of that hull damage. Of course he's going to do that. Right. And instead of drawing a card. So now he's got three more cards. Insight lets him use an insight. If he plays this, he can take two dice. So he could pump up both these. He could take the yellow and um, this wild card for the red. So he gets attack four, and enemies get attack minus five. But that's only attack four. Do the Romulans, Romulans um, star bases have, well, no, there's one of them. There, no, there's three of them that have only a defense of four. And um, he takes their attack offline, so it's a decent chance that he might be able to take that out. Except for the one problem. He can't get there. He can't move. He used this to repair. He used this to be able to take two dice. And then using the dice to do these. But he's got nobody to attack. So this is kind of a slow turn. I think probably this turn, he's just going to stand still. He's going to play this to repair. And do nothing else. And stand still. Uh, not take any dice, and keep this in his hand so that at the end of his turn, he draws back up. Now he's got battle stations, and he's gotten engaged so he can move. And then next turn. And so sometimes you don't have very good turns, which is bad in the competitive game because you're racing against everybody else. But it's bad in the cooperative game too because that means he spent a whole turn doing nothing, and now it's time for Martok to go again. One, two, three, and it's a blue, so he doesn't draw anymore. All right. But here's the deal. Once my draw pile is empty... Jen's draw pile is empty, or the dummy's draw pile is empty. At the beginning of their turn, the next turn, they trigger the end of the round. Everybody else only gets one more turn, and then the round is over. So time moves on. Once a round is done, everybody we wanted to recruit goes away, and a bunch of new ones come out. Um, the dice get re-rolled. There's basically a bunch of stuff that happens. But the main thing is everybody reshuffles their entire deck and starts all over again with a new deck drawing up their hand and continuing on. And the game continues. But you know what? I'm going to stop right there. I've, 
I've just barely scratched the surface, but you guys have seen some action anyway. And like I said right up front, if you want to see more, go check out the Mage Knight run through and you can see even more of the same server type action. But that's it, folks. I think I'm exhausted. Oh, by the way, this uh, beams back up at the end. But still, can't use any more of their action. Another thing, after the end of a round, uh, Donatro will be available again in round two. Also, the special skill will be available. I can't forget, Cisco does have this skill, so that's one extra thing. Oh, and he does have Riker, which is diplomacy. Oh, you know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? I didn't think about that. So, we stood still and just repaired ourselves. But if we wanted to, let's see, what did we draw? We drew battle stations engage and battle stations, I think, right? No, I think we had a battle stations, didn't we? No, we had these two, and we had the repair hall, and we had the advanced research. This is what we had. So, thinking back again to, uh, to Cisco's turn. He repaired the hall. He had to give something up. He'll give up the advanced research because it's it's, this is nicer later on when you have a lot more data on hand. So he uh, did that to repair the hall. Then he's got these, uh, which, which he wasn't going to do anything with, but he could use Riker for Diplomacy 4, and then if he uses both of these for 1, that would give him Diplomacy 6, which is not enough to recruit Wayun. And it doesn't matter because we don't have a place to recruit Wayun yet, because we'd have to level up again to be able to. So actually, yeah, Riker stuck to his original plan. But I was thinking, um, but he does have this. He could get a red crystal, not in your inventory. Could have done some extra stuff. But anyway, ah, I should have stopped when I was ahead, folks. That's it, folks. That's Star Trek Frontiers. And now if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.